Um, okay. So, number one, please don't ask me what the big league says. I don't know. I purposely do not know because I do this. I will take questions at the end. I learned this a long time ago. If I like the proposition, if I like what it wants to do, I vote yes. If I don't I want to keep it the way it is, you vote no. So it's easy. Yes means change. No means stays the same. It's really kind of an easy way. This year, since this is my fourth election, I don't think they're real complicated. They've been a lot worse. So a yes vote means yes, and a no vote means no. And um, the numbering is kind of silly, and I will explain it. <laughs> As you notice, the let numbers are different. Does everybody here have a ballot? Or, okay. No, you don't have to have it with you. But did you get one? If you didn't get one, let me know. You can get it. You can register. You can register today. It's not too late. Okay, so we're going to look at the pros and cons. And question, what? Why is this not going down here? Okay, now we'll go up and down. Okay. So what are pros and cons? They're unbiased. Nonpartisan explanations, state ballot measures, trying to create an understanding of the issues, the content, the arguments for and against, so you can make an informed decision. I'm especially interested in the monetary um, effects of the, some of the ballot measures, so I will give you some money numbers because that's what I'm interested in. 10 propositions, three county issues. Proposition two is a real nice, easy one. Should voters let the state sell 10 billion in bonds to help build and repair public schools and community colleges? There are 10,000 public schools, 115 community colleges in California. The state and the district usually share the cost of renovation. Uh, the state normally uses bonds to pay for its share of costs. A bond is like a loan for a home. You borrow money, and then you have to pay it back. So. The state will borrow money from everybody. You can buy the bond, and then they pay it back to you. Um, we, so far, we've spent $131 billion in voter-approved bonds have been awarded for state faculty funding for schools and community colleges over the last 20 years. So the question is, should we sell those bonds? Um, since you guys are all in the community colleges, 1.5 billion would come to improve the facilities here. If you have family members that are in K through 12, 8.5 billion dollars. The state will need to spend about 500 million dollars per year for the next 35 years to repay the bond. That affects uh, government. It depends on the school district. The supporters say the bonds will pay for badly needed school repair and security improvements, thereby making schools and community colleges sa safer. They have raised $4.9 million. Some of the supporters are uh, California Teachers Association, Ca uh, Federation of Teachers, Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce, 
LA Unified School District, they support this. The opponents say California has already a quarter of a trillion dollars of outstanding unused bonds along with unfunded pension liabilities and retiree benefits. Taxpayers um, are to approve a bond and financing that should have been included in the state um, package. The opponents have not raised any money and the uh, opposition is the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. Here's a nice easy one, Proposition 3. This is an amendment to the Constitution of California. It's kind of a repeal of Prop 208. Oh, eight in 208, right? Yeah, eight in 2008. Okay. And it will change our Constitution. Should the California Constitution be amended to define marriage as a fundamental right for all regardless of sex or race and remove language that states that marriage is only between a man and a woman. It will amend the Constitution and enshrine marriage equality regardless of gender and sexual orientation or race. It says no um, monetary changes and kind of amazing. The supporters say the Constitution should, there is no guarantee that marriage equality will remain law. Proposition three proactively protects against future attempts to restrict marriage rights for same sex or interracial couples. They've raised $4.2 million. Um, the opponents say, huh? It does not affect child marriage. Thank you for saying that because that's what everybody's been saying. Oh, no, you still have to be 18 to be married. If you're under 18, you have to have parent permission. What? Yeah, still against the law, okay? And you know, to tell you, um, there's, there's one person against this. It's the California Family Council. Okay, they have not raised any money. Okay, Proposition 4 is similar to Proposition 2 in that it's a bond issue. We're borrowing money again. Should voters let the state sell $10 billion in bonds for various projects to reduce climate risk and impact? Of course, climate change has seriously threatened the quality of life in California and our economy, and um, we believe it has con contributed to the state's extreme weather. The majority of the funds from previous water uh, bonds and natural resource bonds are already committed. That's why we're asking for this additional $10 billion. Um, we can't, they will, um, let's see, they're going to um, allow, the bond is separated, like $3.8 billion for safe water, $1.5 billion for wildfire and forest restoration. The physical effect, $400 million annually for 40 years. Supporters say uh, proposition will help support the community's health and the economy. The supporters have raised 900, over 
and the big supporters are Labor Federation, Natural Wildlife, the State Park Federation. The opponents don't like the, us using bonds for spending, and um, they say it will have unproven technology, and they've not raised any money, and it's the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. Okay, Proposition 5. It is a constitutional amendment made per that will be per permanent in the California Constitution. Should local bond measures to fund housing bond for low and middle income Californians and public infrastructure projects be allowed to pass with 55 vote approval instead of the 66.7 approval currently required? So now to get a bond passed, 66 and two thirds of the public have to approve it. They want to lower that threshold to 55%. That's what it is. It also um, would allow local governments to assess property taxes above the 1% assessed to repay bonds. It's kind of a part of a repeal of Proposition 13 So lowering the requirements would allow uh, more types of bonds, local bonds, to be approved. They say about between 20 and 50 percent more bonds would be on the ballot. It does say a uh, monetary effect, little effect on the state budget, but will impact local budgets. The people who support it have raised five million dollars. Um, they extend the California Professional Firefighters, California Labor, the AIDS Foundation, the opposition has um, raised $29 million, over $29 million, and they are supported by California Association of Labors, Howard Jarvis, Chamber of Commerce. That's Proposition 5, lowering the limit to, to pass a local bond issue. These are state bond issues right now, okay? Proposition 6, should the California Constitution be amended to Remove the provision that allows involuntary servitude to be used as a punishment for crime. Prohibit punishment for refusing to work assignment and allow voluntary work assignments in, in exchange for credit to reduce sentences. When you are incarcerated, right now, you are demanded to do work. They're considered that servitude, but is against the Constitution, the 14th Amendment. By the way, when they work in the um, prisons, they are paid. Not very much, but they are paid. Okay. Yes, they are firefighters often. My son points out they make my license plates for the cars, too. Um, they amend the Constitution to prohibit involuntary servitude for any reason. Prohibit disciplining people in prison who refuse to work. They do get credit if they volunteer, because they will get credit. The effect on state and local uh, governments is uncertain. Any effect unlikely to exceed the tens of millions of dollars annually. supporters says Proposition 6 restores humanity, human dignity by ending forced labor, which constitutes slavery and violates human rights. Improves public safety for focusing on rehabilitation of incarcerated people. 
the supporters have raised $63,000. Some of the supporters are the ACLU. And I like this one. Watch. No arguments against it. Okay? That makes that one pretty easy. Okay, so the proposition numbers switch. They start out at two to six. Those are all put on the ballot by the legislature. Those are the, your, our state legislatures, the assembly or the state assembly. They put them on the ballot. They are, we've obviously had, we had proposition one before, so they start at two. They're ending at six. 32 is put on by those people when, when I go to Trader Joe's, they have that clipboard outside that says sign this. That's how these got on the ballot, 32 through 36. Those are all people initiatives on the ballot. The people have put them on the ballot. Yeah, it is. I think most of you guys will like this one too. Should California raise a statewide uh, minimum wage to $18 by January 1st, 2026, and then each year based on inflation? Do we raise the basic salary? Now, some people already have raised the sal their salary. I think farm, fast food workers and medical workers have already gotten an increase. This will not affect them. They still get there. So now they want to raise it to $18 for all employees by 2026. Wage would be adjusted for the cost of living each year after 2026. Would not lower wages for people already making $18 an hour. Also, if you work for a big corporation, they have to move a little bit faster and pay you $18 an hour if you're not getting that. Um, the physical effect, higher wages. The local and state employees will increase government costs. Revenue will likely decrease. Lower use of Medi-Cal and CalFresh would save millions a year for the state. The um, California Anal Legislative Analyst Office predicts that raising the minimum wages to $18 an hour will result in higher wages for workers, slight price increases, lower business profit, and an uncertain impact on jobs which could slightly, slightly increase or decrease. Supporters say it will improve the standard of living for millions of workers. The supporters say it will increase the standard of living for millions of Californians. By the way, um, I read that the Massachusetts Institute of Technology Living Wage Calculator says a single adult without dependents in California needs $27.32 an hour to meet basic needs. So, um, the supporters have raised over a million dollars to do this, and it's sponsored by one man, Jan, uh, Joe Schonberg. Uh, he's an investor. It was his idea to do this. So, uh, other people in supporting this obviously is the SI uh, Service Employees International Union. Okay, opposition. Um, they've not raised any money, but the opposition includes California Restaurant Association, California Chamber of Commerce, California Grocers Association. They are opposed to it. Proposition 32. I think you were here before for Proposition 33. Is anybody here for? Yeah. So, all right. It's the rent control one. Okay. Should the Costa Hawkins Rental Housing Act of 1995, a state law, be repealed so local governments can regulate rent? 
So during the 70s and the 80s, we had a building slowdown in California. However, population increased. And the result was housing shortage. We've had rent control in California for 30 years. Some cities, like San Francisco and Los Angeles, limit the amount a landlord can raise the rent each year, a policy known as rent control. That's called Tosca Hawkins. That's the laws, okay? But for 30 years, California has imposed limits on those limits via the law known as Tosca Hawkins. Cities cannot set rate con rent control on single family homes or apartments built after 1995. Landlords are free to set their own rental rates when new tenants move in. If Prop 33 passes, that would change. Cities would be allowed to control rent on any type of housing, including single family homes, new apartments, and new tenants. Yeah, it doesn't say condominiums, but it says tenants, so. They've been fighting to change this law. Um, it's ten advocates have been fighting this law for years and it's been tried, been overturned two other times, 2018, we voted on it and 2020. Uh, lawmakers have also tried with legislation to change it. While those efforts failed, Governor Newsom in 2019 signed a law limiting annual rent increases statewide to 5% plus inflation. Supporters say we'll allow local governments to protect rent. Uh, local voters will be able to decide on whether and how much to control the rent. This is one that's raised a lot of money. Uh, for this has been, um, they raised almost $42 million. The supporters are AIDS Foundation, Veterans Voices, California Alliance for Retired Americans. People against this? Howard Jarvis, what a surprise. Okay, opponents. They argue that property values will drop and developers will be less likely to build new housing, which in turn will drive up prices of existing homes. Some of the opponents, they raised over $105 million. People opposed are California Small Business Association, California Rental Housing Association, Senior Alliance, and, oh, and Howard Jarvis. Sure. Four Right, so I have a house, and if I want to rent it out, uh, sure. Card. So what this law will do is right now, rent control is controlled by the state. They want to move it to the local government. Do you like my slides? Proposition 34. This is real interesting. Uh, <laughs> it's a very interesting one. Uh, I usually don't like to tell you. It's sponsored by the landlord. Okay. Should it? Should certain health care providers be required to spend 98% revenue from the federal discount 
prescription drug program on direct patient's care and should the state be permanently authorized to know to negotiate medical drug price i think this is easier than my the power point so certain health care providers get a discount for buying drugs so um I'll use Kaiser. Kaiser gets drugs and then sells them, and they get a profit. So what this proposition is asking you to do is take all that profit money and put it back to the imp to the patient, to health care. Okay? Makes simple sense there? Yeah, and the reason it is on the ballot is it targets one health care provider. That's the AIDS Foundation. They take their profit and put Prop 33 on, and other, they sponsor a lot of propositions. They buy buildings. They don't give it back to patient care. So the landlord, I call this the revenge proposition, they're going against the AIDS Foundation. It only affects one health care provider, AIDS Foundation. So they have to give their money, uh, use all their money on people care. And that money, by the way, would be permanent. Isn't this it? No, this is an issue. Okay. Um, this one's real interesting. The supporters have raised $44 million to support this. Some of the people supporting it are... Um, California Apartment Association, Professional Firefighters, ALS Association, Chamber of Commerce, and of course, um, they want, this is revenge, so they want the federal law to uh, allow profit from drugs and discounts to support any nonprofit mission of health care providers. The opposition have raised $7 million. Um, one of the big sponsors is Housing is a Human Right, funded by AIDS Foundation. Uh, National Organization of Women, Consumer Watchdog has approved Proposition 34. Proposition 35. This is another one that affects um, Health care providers, should California make permanent an existing tax on manage, managed health care plans to provide ongoing funding for Medi-Cal and other health care services? Right now, big health care providers are taxed. The, the tax money that, that they pay to the state is now given to Medi-Cal. That's how we pay for Medi-Cal, from the big, like Kaiser. Say they are taxed based on their membership. And so that tax money pays for Medi-Cal. Should that be funded permanently is what they're asking. So we, do we want this tax that they pay to always go to Medi-Cal. An increase of two to five billion per year to fund Medi-Cal and otherwise health care programs in, in a few years. Additional costs to cover services not included in Prop 35. So they want to take this money and make it permanent. That's what this Prop 35 is. Supporters will support our health care services. Let's see. Oh, you'll like this one too. Supporters. Uh, global uh, Medical Response, Planned Parenthood of Northern California, California Hospitals. Oh, this is my favorite. The Dental Association supports it. Um, by the way, we need to do this. It would have to be approved by the federal government. This is one that needs approval. They've raised over $80 million. No arguments against it, and they've raised no money. There are some people that children's partnership 
and the Alliance for Retired Americans of Courage, Cal Courage California are against it, but they've not contributed any money. Proposition 36, another very hot item this time. Should California allow people to be charged with felonies for possessing certain drugs and for thefts under $950 if the defendant has two prior drug or theft conviction, convictions? In 2014, we passed Proposition 47. It was to counteract the, inner, the uh, overcrowding of the prisons, and it was um, and kind of strike the three-strike law out. So now they want to reclassify penalties for theft and drug possession under $950 from a misdemeanor to a felony. So would lengthen sentences and require um, sentences, some sentences to be served in prison. They think this would um, decrease organized uh, theft, the smash and grab that's occurred, and to, fill, to felonies to um, discourage people from stealing. Um, the monetary effect, increased state and local costs for prisons, jails, and mental health, drug treatment, likely between ten to thousands of millions of dollars annually. They uh, said it would affect some of the funding for mental health by $600 million. The supporters who have raised $14 million say reclassification of those misdemeanors back to felonies will take away the incentives to steal. It would increase prison terms for serious offenders but would provide them with mental health and substance abuse. Uh, those are the supporters. And they have raised $14 million. Opposition would make California less safe by stopping crime prevention and drug treatment program. It costs the taxpayers billions of dollars. The people opposed to it have raised $3 million. So it's kind of interesting who's opposed to it. ACLU and the governor are against it. The people who are supporting it, Walmart, Target, California District Attorneys Association. Those are the 10 ballot measures. That is not my dog. My dog's much cuter, much cuter. Okay, we do have three county measures. Um, I live in the San Fernando Valley. I only have two county measures on mine. So if you do live, you know, live in the unincorporated areas of the valley, you might have the, the middle one. All right, I'm gonna tell you what proposition, it's not called proposition, it's called measure A. Right now, we had a, um, Measure H in 2017, and we had a tax. One fourth of a cent of your tax goes to, uh, of sales tax goes to the homeless. One fourth of a cent. That's Measure H. They want to repeal that Measure H and change it from a fourth of a cent to a half of a cent with a 10 year duration. So on our tax, they're just taking out another uh, four. So you pay a half of a cent. Um, they expect to raise $4 million. Um, and they estimate it'll cost us about $5 a month to do that. Yes, for the homeless. What? Yeah, for the homeless. That's, right. That's measure A. Okay, there's a measure E. 
Um, I live in Flatlands Valley, so this does not affect me. I got my ballad, and I went, whoa, where's E? So measure E is another tax. It only affects 59 cities and all unincorporated areas covered by the county fire department. So if you, I, I believe because I live in Flatland, Van Nuys, I'm covered by the regular fire department. This does not affect me. Because this is another partial tax, they want a tax rate of six cents per square foot of improvement. So if your house is 60, uh, 1,000 square feet, your parcel tax would be $60. My house is 2,000 square feet. I get a tax increase of $120. It goes to the fire department for new equipment, personnel, communication, okay? That's Proposition E. I don't know if it affects a lot of people here because it's not on my ballot. So. And these measures will pass with 50%. Point one. The last measure is measure G. It was put on the ballot by the supervisors. We have five supervisors now. And they want to increase the size of the supervisors from five to nine. And most importantly, they want an elected county executive officer, like a CEO, to be elected to handle like uh, administrative policies, powers, appointments, can veto certain sections, develop a county budget. This was put on by, who are the two, I always get confused, oh, okay. Horvath, Kahn, and Solis, Solis supported it and Berger and Mitchell are against it. No, they're all five of them are here. Yeah, no, all three support, two don't. The three that support it, Horvath, Kahn, and Holt Solis, people who are against this are Barger and Mitchell. Holly Mitchell? Holly Mitchell, yeah, that's what I said too. So that's um, Proposition G. Now I'll take any questions you have. I know there's people writing questions. Okay, La Costa Hawkins B repeal makes houses cheaper. I don't think it'll affect um, the price of houses. Will Costa Hawkins being repealed make housing cheaper? I would imagine it wouldn't. Yeah, no, who wants to buy a house, right? You're talking about buying, purchasing a house? Did you write this one? Who wrote this one? Were you? Oh, okay. I would imagine it will make it more difficult. This just based on what I wrote. Okay, this is what is here. Costa Hawkins, right? Well, look at how much everything costs now. I'm a homeowner and I'm like shocked. If I need to replace anything in my house, it's crazy. It's tenants. Just city, so you have to live in the city of Los Angeles. Okay, what is the rental association? It's, um, I assume it's the landlord's association. I don't think there is. Tenants have joined together. Yeah, who are they? Well, probably people, homeowners, what? Yeah, apartment owners. Does what Prop 35 raise tax? 35 is, which one? Let me, I have, I go crazy. Wait. Um, no, it would not raise taxes. That's the one that they're taxing the members of the health care providers like 
Kaiser. Kaiser is taxed based on their membership. It does not affect me. Okay, and is there another question? How does Prop 35 increase taxes? It doesn't. No, it will. It's um, only going to affect the health care provider. It's their tax that they have to pay, and it's their tax is based on membership. Like they have twenty thousand members, they pay this. That's how they're taxed. That's how they come up with them. Doesn't affect me. Thank goodness, doesn't affect me as a homeowner. No other question. Is there any other question? No, I don't see thirty-six, but that's okay. What? Well, thirty-six is theft. So. If you, uh, it will increase, more people will go to jail and the cost of jail and um, regulated, you know, jail. California got in trouble. That's why we passed that other one, uh, Prop 47, because we got in trouble because there's too many people in jail. Yeah. Cost of jail, cost of upkeep of people. You can join Howard Jarvis if you're interested. <laughs> no other questions? Okay. Is there any online? What? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Did I make you understand? Huh? Well, I hope you all took notes. Now we know what to do. If you don't know everything on the ballot, still vote for what you know. Right. Vote. Yeah, you don't have to vote for everything if you don't feel sure. Thank you to Marsha. Thank you to ASO, AFT, the League of Women Voters, Ranked Choice Voting, the city. And I want to thank individually all my volunteers. Please give a hand to, I'm going to list everybody, Natalie, Lucas, Al, uh, Julio, Rachel, Zara, um, Giselle, Stephanie, PJ, Christopher, uh, Zom, uh, oh, a lot of you didn't show up, <laughs> Adam, Daniel, Bill, our timekeeper, all day, woo, all dare, Kylie, Alexandris, Harrison, Eleanor, Kavi, Kavi, Kavi right here all day. George, where's George? George back there all day and even came in for training. Alex, uh, Alex R, Rachel, uh, Kristen, Benjamin, Anna, Matthew, Quinn, Kyle, and a where's Amy? Is Amy still here? Amy from League of Women Voters here all day. And all of you, thank you all so much. Thank you for being here. Um, and Alex, our wonderful MC, who's in high school, give him a hand. Isn't that amazing? And go ahead and wrap it up. One final huge thank you to Professor Denise Robb for setting this whole thing up. She got here at 5.30 this morning. <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks for being here. Uh, and you can stop recording. Can you stop recording while you're here? Yeah.